Hey everyone, Nicholas here. Wanted to give you guys a weekly recap of everything that's kind of happened within the California EDD unemployment space. We are in week two of a pretty big change here, and this is the actual uh, work search requirements that went into effect as of July 11th, right? There's been a lot of back and forth about who needs to do what, when, and so on and so forth, but it boils down really simple. If you have a PUA, you're self-employed, you have a gig, uh, you're a gig worker, if you are a regular UI, you have a PEUC claim, you guys only need to do one work search activity per week. And we've gotten some feedback that you don't actually see that as required to upload that documentation into your EDD UI online portal. You don't have to submit that. That is optional. I recommend that you do upload that if you've got you know work searches that you're doing. But again, that's an optional thing on your side. It will not cause your claim to go into pending. You guys are also not required to register for Cal Jobs. However, I recommend that you do register for Cal Jobs to avoid any type of EDD computer glitches that may be an issue because there is a requirement for anyone with a regular UI claim that is in initiated after July 11th, right? And so those people actually do need to register for Cal Jobs. So I just recommend that everybody does do Cal Jobs just to keep it clean and make sure that you guys don't have any pending issues there. All right. If you guys want to talk about the exemptions, right? The exemptions for work searches for regular UI, PEUC, or PUA claims. Again, I don't cover work exemptions because there are specific work exemptions that are allowable per EDD. But as I've already told you guys, I do not think that that is a, an option unless you want to get your claim into a pending status where you guys are actually clicking no, that you're not doing your work searches. And most likely you guys will have your claim put into you know, a situation where you're not being paid for uh, weeks, if not months, waiting for a phone interview to find out why you guys aren't searching for work. So irregardless of what your situation is, I highly recommend that you are absolutely clicking yes and that you're not using those work exemptions and you're completing at least one work search activity per week. That's clearly outlined in my previous videos as well as on the EDD website. Okay, so the last note on work searches is this, is for those of you with a Fed Ed claim. Fed Ed claims are different. They did change this about two and a half weeks ago and Fed Ed uh, claimants absolutely do need to be doing three three work searches per week. Now, specifically, it looks like the documentation that FedEd claimants do need to submit is that if you are applying for work, and I recommend that you apply for it online if possible, you do need to upload that work search activity, okay? Now, that's the information that I'm getting from EDD from some of the press releases that specifically, if you're applying for work, you do need to upload that those three work search act, uh, actions per week. Um, even if you're not applying for jobs, I recommend that you're uploading your three work search activities, even if they're not related to applying for jobs, on uh, your UI portal every week to stay in good compliance. Again, FedEd does not need to apply for Cal Jobs, although it is recommended by EDD and it's also recommended, recommended by myself to make sure that you guys can stay out of those pending situations. You know, that just seems to be you know, something that you just don't want to play with on that side. Again, FedEd also has exemptions that are available. I don't recommend that you use any exemptions. I recommend if you want to keep your claims being paid because it's quite onerous with getting your Fed Ed claim back up and going if they disqualify you because of your work searches, um, that you guys are doing your work searches on a weekly basis. You're spreading that out over the course of the week and that you guys are ready to keep your claim uh, being paid. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about that's really been causing a lot of people problems basically since July 10th is the July quarter review that EDD has now gone through. This is a, a computer system that is going through all the claims and effectively looking to see if anyone has worked or create or earned any wages over the last 12 months. This last happened back in April. It caused a lot of people to be pending. It looks like it's happening again this month. Uh, we're seeing the call volumes are really increasing in terms of how many people call or pe how many people are trying to call EDD. Um, and again, the reason that they're calling, right? Because the only real way to easily fix this is to, uh, to is to call. I do have actually a new tip on that. Uh, you can contact your assembly member, uh, and I'll get into that at the back end of this video, right? Um, so again, previous to this really being known, this quarter review where people were being put into pending for really no apparent reason. Um, you know, the only way to actually get that fixed was to call and have a tier one or level one agent actually manually remove that, that issue and get your payments back on track. And many people waited weeks upon weeks upon weeks waiting for this. So if you guys are in this situation and you have a pending that's happened in the last two weeks, I highly suggest you call 
or you contact your assemblyman. And I have some more details that I'll provide with you on the back end of this video, okay? So that's the quarter review issue that's going on. We have a lot of people that are impending. If you found yourself to be pending over the last two weeks, that's most likely what's going on. It's Okay, the next thing that I wanna make sure you guys are fully aware of is that you know earlier in the week, I put out some reporting about the assemblymen uh, have gotten new staffers in the state of California. And you know this is a really big deal, right? So there are 80 assemblymen in the state of California and they've been given two staffers. And it's hard to understand exactly who these staffers are, but it looks like from the reports that I've seen is that these are actual EDD staff that are working at uh, these assemblymen's offices, right? And this is fantastic, right? So as a result of everyone trying to contact all these assembly members, you know, the assembly members have been given some additional funds to keep these people on staff and have them get the help that, you know, their constituents, you guys need in terms of getting your EDD payments up and going. So this week, you know, after putting out that news report, a lot of people started reporting that their assembly members have actually gotten some really fast results for them with their claims. So guys, I really recommend this. If you have not contacted your assembly member and you have an issue with your claim, or if you contacted them in the past and haven't gotten back from them or heard back from them, you know, any good results lately, I'd recommend that you do it again. I'm going to be putting a link to how to find your representative in the, in the description box here down below. So make sure you utilize this. And I really suggest, even if you want to call, I still think you ought to contact your assembly member because it's a potentially much faster process now. And if you have a really simple fix on your claim, we're seeing people get results and information back within 24 hours. So that's great news. So I really encourage you guys to do that. Okay, the last thing I want to mention is this. The hold times for EDD are still quite long. If you're able to get through EDD and get on their actual hold queue, um, you know, we're seeing reports that of getting through to tier one agents are sometimes lasting over between 30 minutes on the short end up to an hour. Um, and that's that, that's just to reach the tier one agent. If you need to reach a more specialized agent, you know, someone who can do actual serious work on your claim, they're generally called the tier two agent. Um, early in the week, we're seeing that those are taking multiple, multiple hours, upwards of three to six hours, unfortunately. So guys, if you're trying to call EDD, whether you're doing it by yourself or you're using a paid service like Claimer, I just really encourage you that you guys are patient and you, and you, you know, build the time around that, okay? Um, you know, there's the time to get through, there's the time that you have to be on hold, there's the potential disconnects, there's the potential time to transfer between a tier one and a tier two agent. So make sure that you're aware of those time limits, right? I mean, generally speaking, if you need to reach a tier two early in the week, I would plan on being on the phone on hold or talking to an agent for up to three to six hours. I mean, that's, that, that's a better part of a day. Um, you know, later on the week, it seems those hold times generally slow down and they stand and they're much, much less to reach a tier two rep later in the week. So keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, later in the week, it's a little bit easier to get through. Uh, the hold time's a little bit less. The disconnects are a little bit less frequent. Okay. So keep that in mind. The last thing I want to mention this, if you know, you need to reach a tier two rep, please do not try and reach them after 5 PM Monday through Friday. They're going home early. Um, you know, sometime between five and six. So if you're trying to reach somebody, you know, a tier two rep after like five to 6 p.m., I really don't think there's much chance that you guys are actually gonna reach a tier two rep that day. So just keep that in mind as you guys are thinking about when you're gonna choose to call, okay? The last thing I wanna mention on the call-in is that I'm actually doing live streams. Um, and this is to give people connections to uh, EDD so they can directly talk to agents to get their claims fixed. I'm doing these live streams on a regular basis. I'll be having one tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'm looking forward to having as many people show up as possible. I'll be providing the connections. I'm paying for them myself. I'll be teaching everyone about how to call, how to use a paid service like Claimer, how to deal with the disconnects, how to talk to agents, how to get agents to really help you go above and beyond, you know, in terms of them just, you know, kind of telling you what you want to hear and get you off the phone. So these live streams are really valuable and beneficial. And of course, we end up learning a lot because people are actually getting connected to EDD while we're on the live stream, which is really exciting. So guys, look, this is the weekly recap. I just want to give you guys as much up-to-date news as I can. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for helping grow the channel out. I really appreciate it as always. Please, if you're watching this and you're getting value, you know, consider subscribing. It really helps grow the channel out. It helps you know get the views out. It helps people find this information a lot faster. So if you're finding that valuable, please, you know, subscribe. Please comment. Consider uh, liking. Any any activity that you can do to help build the channel obviously helps other people find this type of useful information. With that said, I look forward to talking with you, and we'll see you guys soon.